Next up on my self-imposed quest to paint a model from every founding space marine legion is a world eater. I wanted to do a more gritty, quote unquote, grimdark style for this one, and that really lent itself to this quick scheme which uses a lot of stippling and sponging. There's not much actual brush control required here at all, and as an added bonus, there's no panel lining or edge highlighting involved. I've decided to go with the pre-heresy white and blue scheme here. I just had the urge to come up with a dirty off-white recipe. Anyway, we start by mixing Rhinox Hide and Mournfang Brown to make a base colour for the armour. I'm using a bit of sponge to lightly dab and stipple this over the model, which has been primed black. You want to use the torn edge of the sponge to apply the paint so that you get an irregular pattern with a mix of coverage. As you build up the layers over the model, parts that have only had one pass will show through more of the black primer and be darker than areas which have had multiple coats and therefore be lighter in colour. We want that variation in tone here, so be sloppy and random with your sponging. Next, to start building up the white, I'm going over with an off-white bone colour. In this case, I'm using Karak Stone. To quickly build up colour, I'm using a small stippling brush that I made by taking an old brush and cutting the bristles down to a nub. Similarly to the first layer, I applied semi-random stipples of paint, although this time I keep to the flat interior sections of the panel, avoiding the recesses and the extreme edges. For some of the smaller armour panels, like on the backpack, I use a regular brush for extra precision. The final stage for the white armour is stippling on pure white. I like this heavy body artist acrylic for this because of its superior coverage to most white miniature paints. Again, I'm using a normal paintbrush for the extra level of precision. While in previous steps I was letting the randomness work for me, with this final layer I'm trying to make it look somewhat random but really I'm being very careful to only apply the paint where I want it to go. For the blue shoulder pads I'm using McCrag Blue. It's nice and desaturated. A blue that is too bright would not work well with the muted effect I'm going for here, or over the brown base coat. Once again, I stipple the paint onto the shoulder pads, avoiding the edges and concentrating the coverage towards the middle. I repeat the process with Calgar Blue, making sure to leave some of the previous layers showing through. That's pretty much it for the armour panels. Moving on to the bronze trim, I make a mix of Doom Ball Brown and Scale 75 Gold. I like to mix golds with a bit of brown. It gives much better coverage and can affect the hue of the gold and make it look more natural. In this case, adding a warm, orangey brown gives an almost coppery finish. I simply paint this mix onto the trim, again taking care to leave a bit of the brown base coat in the deepest recesses. I stipple in some pure gold as a final highlight, just to add a bit of interest and variety. Off camera, I painted the base and the other details. You'll want to make sure all of the model is finished apart from the base rim before you start the next step. The observant amongst you will have noticed a glaring omission. What's the one thing a follower of corn requires above all else? It's blood, obviously. I tried a couple of methods for a good splatter. Firstly, I tried getting paint on an old toothbrush and flicking the bristles but I got more paint on myself than the model, so I watered down some corn red to help the flow, put some of the paint on a brush, and sprayed air through the bristles with my airbrush. Only try this technique if you're happy for the model to end up mostly covered in blood. How much paint that comes out is pretty random, no matter how much you try and practice first. Annoyingly, I failed to record the bit where I slipped on the trigger and hit a pocket of paint in the brush that absolutely doused him in red paint. The advantage of this method is that it gives a great impression of directionality. The front of the model is soaked in blood, but the back is basically clean. It really looks like he has charged into the enemy lines and cut down all who stood before him. I painted the edge of the base black, and that was it. I'm trying to try different techniques and styles in this series, and this is one technique that I wouldn't normally go for, but I think it works really well here. Let me know what you think.